This thing looks like a freaking weed whacker. Basic things of a gas motor is you gotta have fuel. <laughs> We are also taking on water, so that's something to keep in mind. <gasps> oh my God, I got a fish, Andrew. I got a Let's open her up. She's open. What is up folks? Welcome back to another video. Coming at you live from the still clean shop. We've been doing a lot of fishing content lately, but the fact that we've still kept it this clean is actually kind of a miracle. We were just out in the boat the other day, so there's a bunch of combos like already rigged up. We went out to a local lake. It was a little bit of a grind, but it's all good. The bait walls are still looking pretty well stocked. I mean, they're not perfect, but you know, we're doing the best we can. It's so hard to keep a shop clean once you actually clean it, it's crazy. But what I wanna talk to you guys about today is actually in that box with all that very interesting writing on the side of it that's also falling apart. So about a year ago, I was perusing late night on Amazon, which I'm known to do, just kind of cruising, looking at different stuff, you know, thinking about video ideas for the future. And I came across something very interesting. I found this super inexpensive outboard boat motor from China that was like a two horsepower, four stroke outboard motor. And I thought to myself, you know what we really need around here? More junk. And I ordered it and it has been sitting in in this shop. It's been moved all over the place actually, but it's been in that box ever since. I've been waiting for the right time and the right opportunity to pull this thing out of the box and answer some questions that I have about it. Like, does it even run after sitting in a box in my shop for a year? Does it have enough power, being that it's only like a two horsepower, to push a boat in like a normal windy day? Does it have the ability to be a functioning and serviceable boat motor that can get you out on the water and help you catch fish? Well, those are all the questions that I'm hoping to answer in today's video, but we're gonna need some help from a few different people. Andrew's gonna be here any minute. That's one helpful dude. I also happen to know a young man who has a John boat that he's not using right now. It's sitting in his yard and he's willing to donate it to this little experiment. But first of all, we gotta see what type of shape this thing is in. Now I'm not sure if it's partially open because rats have gotten to it or maybe I've tried to open it and like look at it for a second and I just immediately gave up. Oh. Well, there she blows. Still in the plastic, as you guys can see. I mean, this is this is brand new. Let's see here. Just wanna pull this thing out and get a look at it. Okay, well, we got several pieces. And we got a fuel funnel and a prop. Oh, wow, that's, that's covered in liquid. Oh, that can't be good. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that is just covered in a <laughs> grease-like substance. Oh boy, that's, that's not great. This thing looks like a freaking weed whacker. Ugh. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh God, this thing's actually surprisingly heavy. So uh, this is what we're working with here. Now, just looking at this thing and feeling it, I mean, it feels pretty hardy in my hands. It's actually a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be. It's got all the components of an outboard motor. All right, well, um, I mean, that's that's a motor. There's your little, little handle right there. Got your prop, tiny little prop, but hey, I mean, it looks like it's in good shape. Shaft looks good. That little mount right there looks pretty standard, looks good. Got your fuel tank, your little pull chain start. I mean, everything you would need. Oh, excuse me, I said two horsepower. It's actually a 3.6 or a four horsepower. So not a two, my mistake. It is a four stroke outboard motor, or at least that's what's indicated on the instruction manual. Oh boy, there's a lot of information here. Safety information number two, do not overpower the boat with this outboard motor. Are they serious? Overpowering the boat could result in a loss of control. Okay, I have a hard time believing that this thing is going to get any boat out of control. Let's go! But maybe I'm crazy. And do not smoke when you're filling up the gas tank. Got it. The good part is this thing is a four stroke, so I mean, it's super simple, it just needs gas, it needs oil. That's, that's it. I think we've done enough reading on this thing for now. We need to get this thing out of the shop, put some gas in it and some oil, see if we've even got like a spark and then go from there. What do you think, man? Dude, I think it looks sick. It looks like a weed eater. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought when I first saw it. Also, there is no oil in it. Just found that out. Luckily, I read this little warning thing right here. So we need to go to Daryl's house real quick. By the way, shout out to my sister, Libby. Got me the coolest Christmas present ever that's just sitting on the back of the buggy. But awesome little novelty license plate for the Lojo fam. I see a John boat. Oh man, I think it's smaller than I remember. Yeah, it's small. It's okay. I mean, 
four horsepower motor. It's not like we need a 20 footer or anything. No, it's gonna get that thing plain and dude. Let's do a little snake check real quick. I, there's almost a guarantee that there's one under there. There's like all these little holes where something's obviously been going in and out. I don't want to grab it, but I have to. <laughs> Movement. I don't see anything. Dude, you know what though? The John boat itself is actually in pretty good condition. And it's got a plug. No way. Let's go. Transom is uh, looking a little, you know, I mean, it's been around. Nope. Well, that strap's not tied to nothing, buddy. Okay, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I forgot to do it. I, I don't have to move it far. Oh, oh dude. Yeah. Too easy. I wanna get Daryl's opinion on this motor. Might be taking a shower. Were you envisioning it? I might have been. How could you not? Ooh, four-stroke oil, that's right. Well, let's go on the hunt for some four-stroke oil. You check the ports, I'll check the equipment shed. If we didn't find a snake underneath that boat, I'm about to find one right now. Daryl's house is the kind of place that'll have everything except what you're looking for. Here, let me show you the motor that we're about to mess with. Tell me if you think it's gonna work. Oh yeah, that'd be perfect for that little boat. I think it was $500 on Amazon. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'd be perfect for that little boat. <laughs> it's a little plastic prop though. I don't know yeah. how tough that thing's gonna be. You think it's gonna work? Yeah. Some old Johnsons I had years ago, back in the 70s, had no Carter key. You better carry a bunch of them with you who's out there. Really? If you hit anything at all, even like that grass, it'd shear that, that uh, pin. That's why they send you extra prop and extra <laughs> everything, because they know that's probably gonna happen. So we can definitely take the boat. Oh yeah. Yep. Transom's a little, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's about like our project boat transom when we tore that thing out. Yeah. But but it is aluminum. Yeah, exactly. It's fine. And that motor's not heavy. Hell yeah, we got the trim much really work on that. I mean, the main base of it's still fine. It's just like the trim's coming off right there and a little bit dry rot, but I mean, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm gonna have to use a sock to plug the hole up. Hey man, the sock, that's one of the best boat plugs in the history of mankind, is just stuffing a sock down that's in it. Right, I've right. done that so many times. I'm really glad there was no yellow jackets or wasp in this thing. I got bit by a yellow jacket the other day. I still have a mark on my finger from that. I hadn't been bit by a yellow jacket in years. And let me just tell you guys, if you've never experienced it, it freaking hurts, okay? There's gonna be some stuff that we still need to put together here. But I just want to get this thing on the boat and just see what she looks like. Oh boy. It literally looks like a giant weed eater. <laughs> Don't you talk about her like that. Oh, you know it's going to sound like a weed eater. All right, we want to make sure that joker is tight. I don't want that to end up on the bottom of the pond or the lake where we're going later. Okay, that thing's on there pretty good. I just love the fact that they included a little funnel because it's such a pain trying to pour gas into a tiny tank without spilling it all over the place. I also think it's pretty neat they sent an extra prop because they're just so confident in the strength and durability of their original prop. And these directions are written like in such weird English, you can't even hardly understand it. No, here we go, here's a good one. After the outboard motor starting, low speed to revolve to prepare the heat three to five times, turn according to what need, adjust to the accelerator homogolous position. What in the f is that? That's a perfect English right there. And what, what does that mean? Let's get a little oil in there. God, that should be enough, right? Well, I don't wanna overfill it. Hang kai. hang kai. I think it's a hang kai. Hang kai. Four horse, four T. Not sure what that means. Four turbos. Yeah, there you go. You're four right. da, 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 da. Andrew, would you hold a funnel for a guy? We gotta gas this bad girl up. She needs gas. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that just Ready blew in my gas. face. All right, watch yourself. This is a NASCAR fueler right here, so you can get fuel quickly. That's good for now. That way if there's an explosion, we can control the size of it, you know? Well, there's the kill switch. I need to know where that is. The red button, push that and it will stop. Okay, the choke's right here. There's start, run. Okay, well. Give it a shot, dude. Hold on a second. Hold on a second, boy. So we need to get her on down there. All right, she's in the water. All right, so we're in the start position. And there's not like a fuel on and off switch or anything. So I think we should be good there. There's the problem. Let's go ahead and hit that four or five times. One, two, oh yeah. I see fuel, I see fuel coming in. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that's one of the basic things of a gas motor is you gotta have fuel. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. Oh, it was on start, but let me try choke. Oh, yeah. oh! 
Dude, we got smart, man. We are running. I guess I should let it run for a couple minutes, and I'm gonna switch it to run and see if we can actually get some, some thrust out of this thing. Let's take this puppy for a spin. Oh. This thing has got some throttle now. thing is awesome now there's not a ton of throttle on it but that's okay it's a four horse and we were just leaving a massive wake just going in a straight line Let's take her for another spin look at that get up and go oh my gosh this thing is so freaking cool maneuverability is just off the charts i really like this little stick handle right here i mean we're just running her wide open right now we're got wake she goes from stop to start pretty quick don't let me splash the camera oh oh man this thing is awesome oh whoo whoo a little kill switch works that's good to know Dude, that thing is sick. Well, that worked a lot better than I thought it was going to out of the box just for sitting there for a year. One of the coolest things about this motor is not that it runs, which is also cool, but the fact it's so small and you can just take it off and put it on any vessel that you want to, which kind of gives me an idea, Andrew. Yeah. Excuse me, paddle board. Yeah, it's time we upgrade the old dock boat situation because she was a great boat. But let's be honest, this level of thrust is just no longer getting it done. The real question is, is this boat gonna get more thrust out of that motor or does the John boat get the most? Woo! The dock boat has power, boy! New favorite motor ever, right here. What do you think maximum speed wise? You think John Boat was faster? For sure. Dude, I don't know. It seemed like we were getting going pretty quick. I gotta be honest with you folks, I cannot believe that it pushed the dock boat almost like seemingly as good, if not better than the John Boat. We were thinking that the dock boat would be harder to push. It's a heavier boat. There's a ton of wood on it, those big barrels, but I don't know, you guys be the judge. Which one was moving faster? Now, we've only answered a couple of the questions that we had in the beginning of this video. We did answer, would it start out of the package? The answer to that's obviously yes. We also asked the question, would it be able to push a boat around a lake, some type of a wind? We answered that question with a yes as well. The last question was, could this thing support an angler out on a lake trying to catch fish and just do everything you need a boat motor to do? I'm gonna load one of the boats up, take it to a much bigger lake with some trophy bass in it and put it through a rigorous fishing exercise. See you guys there. Now for the ultimate test for this little $500 motor, we have come to the big lake. We have some wind, there's some big bass out here. Let's take her for a spin. That was so close. All right. They all laughed at us. They all said we couldn't do it. Let's open her up. She's open. Now this, this is impressive for a number of different ways. We're actually kind of going against the wind right now. This motor's having to work pretty hard. Let's see what kind of donuts we can do on this thing. Probably not a good idea. Let's go! We're waking ourselves. <laughs> oh, we're barely doing anything, but it's fun. So freaking sick. Man, that feels good. Well, while we're here, I mean, we might as well try to fish a little bit. I'm not gonna have a ton of boat control per se, but you know, I think that's all right. 
I can sacrifice a little bit of boat control to have a little bit of fun. Oh, wow, there's not a lot of stability. First cast in a tree, baby. Can't make that up. We haven't fished this lake in a while. We've, we've let it rest for a few weeks. It's probably full on post spawn at this point, but there are some big fish that like to cruise the shallows this time of year. And this whole little creek right here, it's a perfect little creek for a small boat. It's out of the wind, big time spawning area. I think I see a bed right there, in fact. A lot of potential in this spot. You gotta love the fact that I have no paddle right now, but also just no plan as to how I'm gonna control the boat. I'm just kind of going with it, to be honest with you. Just going where the world takes me right now. What about out here? This whole thing is just kind of a shallow grass, flat. There could definitely be beds out there just as much as there are, you know, the visible ones up shallow. I can't believe I'm just now remembering an old John boat trick. If you don't have a paddle, what you do is you grab some type of a moving bait that catches a lot of water. In this case, it's going to be a spinner bait. Watch this. You start making casts out in front of you or the direction that you want to go, and then you just start retrieving it. Eventually, we'll start heading whichever way I'm casting with the spinner bait. <laughs> the boat's already starting to move out. I'm telling you guys, it's real. We hadn't moved a lot, but we have moved just for making a couple casts. I am shocked I haven't been bit yet. Made quite a few casts out into this really nice grass. But I did also do 18 donuts out here not 12 minutes ago. So might be some residual shock going on for these fish. Let's make a quick run, you know? I'm not happy with this spot. I'm not satisfied with it. We are also taking on water, so that's something to keep in mind. What do I want to throw here? What about a slim shake worm? That's where I normally whack them on this lake. Oh, that was a dime. That was a dime. I just go right into a tree. Dang it. Speaking of the boat, we've taken on a little bit more water. I'm not like super sketched out yet. The way I see it, a John boat's going to take on a couple inches of water. I mean, any John boat, anytime, anywhere, it's pretty standard. Oh yeah, there we go. That's where I was trying to get it. That's going to work right down that little line. I think there's multiple beds right there. There's got to be somebody. This motor has worked so hard and it has performed so well, we have to give it the proper respect and catch a fish with it on the first trip. It's got to happen. We're going to stay out here all night if we have to. Oh my God, I got a fish, Andrew. I got a, and I've floated to the bank. How did this happen? Come here, buddy, I need you. Woo! Oh, well, got good news for everybody. The motor is fishable. It's official. Official. <gasps> Dude! That's an exciting moment in a man's life. Little guy, these are actually not supposed to be in here, so we're gonna have to. You know what, first fish with the Hankai, we'll let him live. All right, so this thing has passed literally every test that we have put it through, but it has not passed the multi-man test. That's right, dude. We need to get Andrew in here with me, so that way we got total weight distribution and see how she handles in that much more difficult situation. Ready, oh, there we go. Andrew, I hope you're ready for this, man. Oh, there we go. Ouch. All right, you ready? Man, oh, we are digging. We might want to get you right here, actually. Yeah, we might want to, yeah, let's try that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. See, now, now we're standing up a little bit. We better conserve what gas we have left, man. Here, why don't you take this lunker log? All right. Let's see how the boat rig handles two men. Dang, man, all that water came up front with you. You sure did, it's at my feet. Dang, it's dry back here. How is that even possible? I weigh more than you, and then we got the motor back here. Man, how hard did you hit the, hit the snacks after you got married, hey, though? Hey, man. Oh, bald eagle, dude. Oh, bald eagle just grabbed a freaking bass, dude. That bald eagle is carrying like a two pound bass right there. I watched it happen. Talk about an underrated ferocious animal, an eagle? I mean, 
I've said it before, but I'll say it again on camera. If eagles were bigger, if eagles were even a little bit bigger, like let's say twice as big as they currently are, human beings would have big time problems, okay? They would be hunting us for sport. Guys, let me tell you something. That motor right there, that piece of equipment has easily become one of the best purchases in the history of this channel. Not only does this thing work, but it did everything we asked it to do. It answered every single question that we had and it passed every test with flying colors. Even the fuel efficiency is pretty good. We only put like half of a tank in there to start with and it's got like just at like maybe at a fifth of a tank, a quarter, just below a quarter right now. Guys, this was so much fun to pull this thing out of my shop and it worked. And I mean, everything worked out really well. The only bad part was the bass bite was kind of weak today, but we did catch a fish. We serenaded this thing. We consummated the relationship, if you will, with a nice little fish catch. But after that, the bite just died. Smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, guys. And let me know if you want the John boat to become a vessel that we use on a channel. I know I want to use this thing more now that we've played with it some. I want to take it out to some public water somewhere else, maybe some big water. Who knows? Put a deck on the front there. It'd be so easy to do. Let me know if you guys want to see that and we'll get on it. The other boat build, the original, like the 1979 Phantom or whatever that we were restoring this time last year, we're getting close to being done with that. It is getting some final little bells and whistles done on it right now. Hopefully it's gonna be done soon, cross my fingers, and we can reveal to you what we've been working on over the last year since we kind of stopped on that project. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. I love each and every one of you. Guys, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're smashing the thumbs up button, all that good stuff. See you guys next time, we out.